Aero microbiology is about air, the microbes in the air. So it's getting you known now with uh, this pandemic, you know how important it is to study aerosolization, transmission, and deposition of microbes in the air. Okay. There'll be probably more and more airborne pathogens, airborne toxins uh, in time now. So because main 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 problem is once once a pathogen is airborne, the chances of it being the chances of it spreading is very very high. Okay, and you can see how the convenience of air travel have caused uh, has make it so easy for a disease to spread. But uh, this COVID-19 is also special because it is not, uh, it is highly contagious, but not, uh, mortality rate is still low. So it is very clever in that it allows the person to be contagious over longer time, longer periods of time. And also there are some asymptomatic cases. Uh, so it, this can be considered a highly evolved pathogen because uh, a pathogen that is not evolved uh, long enough, for example, Ebola, it causes death quite fast. So it doesn't, uh, it cannot spread as badly as uh, COVID-19. So a, a, a clever pathogen will actually ensure that the hosts do not die so fast, okay? This is to ensure that it spreads more. But it, it is just a reflection of how it has evolved with the host. Okay? So you can see examples of this when you look at the different types of uh, uh, pathogens. Okay? Some pathogens uh, tends to spread better than others. All all through it's uh, the strategy that is using la, whether yeah to be highly contagious you cannot have high mortality rates okay uh, so when you look at aeromicrobiology you have to there are certain categories extramural and intramural uh, aeromicrobiology. So extramural look at the quality of the air outside the buildings. Intramural look at the quality of the air inside the buildings. So even recently we, we there's a lot of interest in sick building syndromes uh, because buildings that are not designed well with poor ventilation uh, not enough light tends to be humid then the fungal spores will increase in counts and then most of the people working in that building tends to get sick okay so humidity ventilation and light uh, these are important a uh, natural light so these are important uh, elements of a building that is healthy okay so you have good ventilation natural light so uh, Legionnaire's disease was the one of the first few diseases that people were able to relate to poor ventilation because the uh, air conditioning system there was a, a source of uh, Legionella bacteria there. Okay. So for for microbes to cause airborne these airborne infections, there has to be first a stage called aer aerosolization. Okay, aerosolization is where the microbes is being brought into the air to be airborne. Okay, aerosolization can be a simple act as sneezing coughing so these are all kinetic 
uh, kinetic uh, processes that can cause the microbe to be airborne. Okay. So aerosolization will bring the microbe into the air, but the But the, the microbe, the, the source of aerosol, aerosol can be diff, categorized into different sources, point source. If the source is from a single point, a linear source, if the source is moving, or area, if uh, you're talking about a large exposed area, for example, a dump site. Okay, so once the microbe is aerosolized, it's in the air, then you start to consider how far is it being transported. Is it sub micro scale transport within buildings? Micro scale transport of less than 1 km, meso scale across states, and macro scale across countries. So, for a microbe, for an aerosol to be transported over large distances, it has to be related to a large source of energy that causes it to be aerosolized, either a volcanic eruption or a nuclear explosion, for example, in Chernobyl, where the nuclear reactor exploded and the aerosol that is produced uh, covered whole continents. Okay, so energy is required to bring the aerosol up into the air the higher it is up in the air, then the higher the chance it is to be transported over large distances. Okay. So what are the processes that affect aerosols once it's in the air? Uh, diffusion. Diffusion is basically dependent on gra concentration gradient, which means uh, an aerosol will diffuse from high concentration, uh, it will diffuse out so that the concentration is equal over uh, the whole area. Okay, so that's why you see uh, if someone sneezes at one point, the virus will probably diffuse out and try to uh, have equal concentration over the entire uh, room okay that's diffusion so inactivation is where once it is aerosolized okay the microbes are vulnerable because of temperature because of uh, sun uv radiation because of the radical ions in the atmosphere and because of also uh, humidity whether in the air there is lower, less humidity, so some bacteria tends to survive better. So between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, uh, gram-negative bacteria survive uh, better because of the lipid in their cell wall. Okay. So once bacteria is aerosolized, microbes are aerosolized, there are also processes that uh, causes it to deposit, which means bring it back uh, onto the ground. You can have gravitational settling, but these are only for large particles. So for bacteria, for viruses, they don't, uh, they are not affected by gravitational settling. But if they are attached to pollen, if they are attached to larger particles, then they will be brought down by gravity uh, together with the attached 
uh, particle. Okay. Uh, downward molecular diffusion is just normal diffusion, but in a sense, uh, facing downwards. Okay. Surface impaction usually uh, when there's wind or when there's uh, some kind of air turbulence. If the microbe is uh, impacted under the surface, it will be attached to the surface. Okay. Uh, rain deposition, very important in this country because rain will bring down a lot of aerosols. Okay. That's why it, it is uh, the air always feels fresher after uh, rain. Okay. Electrostatic deposition is dependent on the charge of the surface versus the charge on the uh, microbe or bacteria. Uh, do you all know the, the, the net charge of a bacteria? Anyone? Do you all know the net charge of a bacteria? No, that time. Huh? Uh, the net charge of a bacteria is negative. Okay, so surfaces with positive charge uh, will actually attract uh, bacteria. So air sampling, so uh, we've gone through this. So whenever we consider air sampling, we have to consider the availability cost, whether it's quantitative, qualitative, and whether there is size discrimination, whether we can we can categorize the size of the particles that have uh, that uh, we are sampling. Okay. So the common approaches are deposition, impeachment, and impaction. Okay. So uh For deposition, usually suitable media plates exposed for 30 minutes. Okay, so R2A is uh, a suitable plate for, it's a low nutrient plate for suitable for bacteria. Okay, but usually when you're doing deposition, uh, you, you will always have uh, plates for fungus because fungal spores are a major problem so you always have uh, not sure maybe they use uh, potato dextrose agar pda or other other suitable agar for fungus fungus is important because of the spores that they form so so when you place the plates, it has to be uh, usually table height and you have to consider whether the area is windy or calm. Okay, Because wind turbulence will affect the deposition of microbes onto the plates. So this is the impingement that you have done. Okay. It is quantitative, quantitative but also dependent on the pump. So you need to know the amount of uh, volume the pump is uh, working at, okay? And this is the uh, six stage impaction air sampler. The design here is the, the mesh and the fil filtration system here is the so to mimic uh, the human parts, for example, nose, pharynx, trachea, uh, secondary bronchi, terminal bronchi, alveoli. Okay, so that's why uh, it's, it's six stage, and it also allows uh, size discrimination of the aerosols because of these filters and mesh. Okay, 